can get to know you. Thank you, Samson. Samson, do you, can, I, can I make fun of you for a minute first? Sure. <laughs> so when I, when I met Samson five years ago, he had more hair. And I think he saw me and he wanted to adopt this, this uh, relaxed hairstyle that keeps going further back from the glasses. <laughs> So Samson, Samson for me was one of the people who really em, epitomized the spirit uh, in the first batch. He was very, um, so we were in person and we had some challenges just like we have challenges now because things keep changing and we keep learning and growing. But Samson is one of the people who always had the real idea and the spirit in mind. Um, and so we've stayed in touch over the last uh, years and it's been really fascinating to see the progress that Samson has made. And he's been one of the people who really embodies, as I said, the spirit of um, the making progress when the whole community makes progress and just pushing, pushing, pushing. So it's great to see you, Samson. I need to run. I can't stay for the whole talk, but I just want to say thank you. Warm welcome to you. Um, but I am surprised. I mean, there's, there's a bit of glare <laughs> off the hair. So you need to, you need to change the brand of wax that you use. Because, <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Arun. And I, I, I really look forward to spending time with the, uh, fourth batch um and yeah um it, it's not intentional that i also have a receding hairline um i wish i wish i had more hair um but i guess uh, it comes with age so looks like it, it came faster than i you know preempted so i would take it as such um but i look forward to you know catching up with you sometime later so thank you thank you for the invite as well All right Okay, um, Cindy, so I can go ahead, right? Absolutely, absolutely, the floor is yours. Okay, okay, sure. Hi guys, um, I'd really love to see your faces um, if you can turn on your cameras, uh, but if you can't, um, we'll do quite a, a very quick introduction um, when I'm done so we can get right into it. So as Cindy uh, indicated, my name is Samson Kofi Adute. Um, I was born and raised in Ghana, um, and I have lived uh, almost um, in every sub-region in Africa. And I am a very big, 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 big fan of Pan-Africanism. And I also believe in the spirit of excellence, integrity, um, and hard work. Um, I was part of the inaugural class uh, for 10 Academy and we had a really amazing uh, time together in person and unfortunately COVID has has really disrupted how we do things these days and so it's been quite a a, a challenge uh, connecting online but I hope that you're having a great time um, please pardon me um, I have some people doing something in my apartment and I so you might get some noise once in a while um, but hopefully that should be sorted by in about 10 to 15 minutes um so yeah about myself wow that's a very interesting question um so in terms of what i do i work with the african institute of mathematical sciences um and i'm currently um the alumni engagement and community of scientists reporting um, manager for the global network and aims is a pan-african uh, non-profits in, in the space of education and research. And we are currently based in five African countries um, with chapters in, in, in Europe and in the Americas. And um, yeah, before, I'm not quite sure what exactly I should say about myself, because um, I feel like it's something, like most of the information you can find on the internet, but I write, um, I'm an ex-journalist um, I'm currently a better scholar at the University of Cape Town uh, Graduate School of Business, and I am a scholar in the field of inclusive education, um, and I also teach. So I'm currently in Ghana I'm teaching a class um, of students from the AIMS program, and I teach in a, in a mini MBA type of program. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to spending time with you. Um, please, if you don't mind, kindly give me one minute. Let me just speak to the guys and I'll be back shortly. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay.
It's okay. It's okay, Samson. Thank you very much. So, uh, guys, in the interim, as we wait for Samson to join us back, I'd like for you to think about some of the main questions you've had about what it could look like when you're done with week 12 at 10 Academy and just to join industry. What are some of the big questions that you have regarding what the journey is like, regarding what to expect, regarding how to interact with your colleagues at work, regarding how to carry yourself as a junior professional who's just starting out? Think about those questions and then uh, please don't forget to ask Samson towards the end. Thank you, Samson. Uh, welcome back. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Cindy. Um, are we going to do a Q and A according to the questions she had sent, shared with me initially, or I could just feel free to go right into it? Uh, yeah, you can go right into it. And if there's anything pending, uh, our trainees here have a number of that they'd like to ask. So uh, you okay. can just go right into it. If there's something else that's pending, I'll ask. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think I muted myself. I think I one of the things I want to share is I can, you know, based on your questions, um, let you know what I like, how I've been able to manage things throughout my career. But when I joined the 10 Academy, I had graduated with about a few years experience, um, primarily in communications and program management. And it was my intention to, you know, go into business. At that time, I co-founded um, a startup, um, actually started a business which failed and started another business um, with some colleagues of mine, and I later left. So I was really looking forward to, you know, joining industry and getting the skills that I need to be able to um, create a career for myself in industry. And I was, I was really fortunate to have had a very good experience um with 10 academy and i and i know that you know that is not you are you aren't having anything short of what i had perhaps you might even be getting more than i had um then during my time at 10 academy um but to answer the questions that i received sort of um just so before i get into the details i would really love to hear your voices you know i i don't want this to be a very monotonous uh conversation or like a monologue so it would be nice if you could quickly um we could just do an activity so i'm going to ask you to mention your name and your country um and then you nominate the next person so if you don't mind let's just do this quick activity and then we can get back into the story of my life <laughs> okay so maybe we can start with this Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Behibu. Sorry. Go ahead, Behibu. Okay. Uh, my name is Bahagu, and I am from Ethiopia. I am a batch for training in uh, Ten Academy. I'm graduated in software engineering, and I can say I'm having a great time at Ten Academy. Uh, saying this. Please then nominate then, uh, the next person. Please nominate the next person. Yeah. Uh, let me give the second chance to Barakat. Hello everyone. Hello Samson. Uh, my name is Barakat and I'm a batch for trainee at Ten Academy and I'm from Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, that's all about me. Uh, I choose uh, Mbani. If you read there, Mbani. Fumbani, are you here? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can. All right. My, my name is Fumbani Banda, and I'm from Malawi. I'm excited to be in Batch 4, or Ten to be in one of the trainees in Batch 4 for Ten Academy. I graduated in, um, with, uh, I graduated in computer systems and security. So it's really an opportunity to be with uh, with Ten Academy and try to improve my skills. Thank you. 
Uh, you nominate uh, Stacy. Hello, uh, my name my name is Stella Ostashi, and uh, I'm from Kenya. I graduated uh, with uh, a BSc Actuarial Science, and uh, I'm very excited to be in an academy to expand on my skills and uh, learn new things and meet new people. And uh, Why are you nominating Stashi? Christian. Great. Good evening. Uh, my name is Christian Sanu. I'm from Benin Country. I'm in Bashford Bell Academy. And I'm pending to defend my master's degree in biostatistics. Uh, so I think I nominate Kate. Hello. Hi, my name is Kate Njoki. I am from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm also about to graduate in September. I'll be graduating with a bachelor in actuarial science, like Stashi. And yeah, I, I'm planning on taking a different career path. That's why I'm in this batch for 10 Academy. And so far, it's been really great. Yeah. I nominate um, Mukuzi. Uh, hi, so my name is David Mukuzi. I graduated with a degree in uh, electrical and electronic engineering. So far, I've been having a really good time in, in, uh, in Patch 4. It's a really good group. I'll nominate Amon. Uh, hello, my name is Amon Kimtai. Uh, I'm control and instrumentation uh, graduate, and I'm glad to be part of batch four of yeah. Ten Academy. I'll nominate Desmond Onam. Uh, good evening. My name is Desmond Onam. I I'm about to complete my degree in mathematics and computer science. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I am, I can say I'm happy to be part of batch four of 10 academy training. Uh, I'd nominate uh, Jakinda Lodge to go. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jakinda Lodge. Uh, I come from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, I'm also um, also supposed to graduate on in September uh, with a degree in business information technology and uh, hoping to extend my studies in my applied analytics and machine learning in the future. So I enjoy, I like, uh, I'm grateful for Ten Academy and uh, having this opportunity to learn and uh, to better myself uh in my career path i'll choose bless for portugal next uh, hi everyone i'm bliss papa i live in Nairobi, kenya uh i did a degree in informatics and computer science and it's an honor being here i nominate ethan okay hello uh, my name is Ethan. I'm from T Tanzania. I've graduated uh, a bachelor degree in, in, in electronics and telecommunication. Uh, I'll uh, choose Bereket Kibble. I think I'm called for a second time. <laughs> you could just okay. another one. Yeah. Okay, maybe Amon. Keep time. Yeah, I think he's cold. Who hasn't who hasn't had the chance to speak yet? Um, could you speak Desmond? Like Azaria could go next. 
Okay, I think it's me. Uh, oh, okay. I okay, sure. Uh, I think it's me. Uh, I'm called Wera Richard. I'm from Rwanda, Kigali. So I've really enjoyed to join Ten Academy, but for uh, I'm trying to run machine learning. So because I want to pursue my career in artificial intelligence, so I think that machine learning will make me able to go through. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's it. Um, yeah, almost. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Um, name is Azaria. Um, graduating in Bachelor's of Software Engineering, I think in around four or five weeks. Um, yeah, Ten Academy has been a really great um, learning opportunity. Um, I do plan to pursue my master's in statistic and machine learning, um, maybe in the future. So this has been a really wonderful uh, growth field experience with a lot of wonderful people. Interesting. Bezawit Salem. Oh, she keeps joining and leaving. I don't know if it's a, an internet situation, but nice to meet you, Azaria, and all of you. Um, it's been it's interesting uh, to see how diverse your backgrounds are, um, but also exciting to see that you're all one way or the other in the quantitative field, um, which is really important. And so for those of you who are graduating in a few weeks, uh, congratulations in advance to you. Um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time. Um, I hope that you enjoy the moment uh, as it is and also um, enjoy the new phase of your life um, where you get to actually apply your skills or the skills you've gained. So moving right into it, um, I think I'm going to start with, um, with you know, talking about some of the technical and non-technical skills that I have um, that gave me an upper hand in my career. So maybe I'll give you an idea of what, I, what my career looks like. Um, I don't come from a quantitative background, so just to give you an idea. Um, so I, I, my first degree is actually in integrated development studies. Um, and it, I did a liberal arts program. So I did economics, accounting, um, ethnography, political science, history, um, journalism, and all of those things. Um, so I did quite a very intense program. And right after that, I did um, a program in science communication, and I then came to Ten Academy, um, and later on went to do an MBA, and I'm currently doing an MPhil. Um, now, in terms of my career path, um, I started off as a project supervisor in a water and sanitation project um, before I went to the university. And while I, was I Whilst in the university, I worked in media. So I worked in a radio station, learned how to edit scripts, learned how to edit voice, learned how to record, and also learned how to um, read the news, do newspaper analysis, and all of these things. I learned quite a lot around press relations, how to speak in public, how to, um, you know, um craft a storyboard for advertising how to come up with you know ideas creative concepts for advertising um and how to implement an advertising project one of the things that i did in school as part of my projects for my final year was i had to direct a play so i had to write a script and direct the scripts um, as part of the requirements i also had to do a video commercial um, and so I had to do the voiceover, shoot the video, edit, and all of that. Um, and then I also had to do a radio documentary. So all these skills were very important skills that I was able to pick up while I was in the university. So by the time I left the university, I actually didn't have to apply for a job. Um, I remember I was staying, I was at home one day and I got a phone call uh, from a company that apparently had seen some of the things that I had done and they've managed to get my Um, and they offered me a job way before I left the university. Um, it, 
even before I left the university. So um, that also created a very unique opportunity for me to be able to engage um, with other people um, way before I left school. So after I left school, went into the corporate world. I remember my first, so my first job after school was working as an advocacy and communications associate in a development consultancy. And I was the only person working in that department. So I had to build the department from scratch. So one of the things I had to do was to um, help the department or help the organization rebrand its identity. So for instance, I had to um, think about, there was a website project that I, I had to oversee. Um, apart from overseeing that website project, I had to develop content. I had to um, handle partnerships, you know, on some of the advocacy projects that we worked on. So I remember um, being, you know, a newbie in that organization less than a year. Um, I had the chance to actually write a grant and got some grant funding that helped the organization to run a climate change advocacy project across Ghana, which I had to manage. And that also, you know, put me in touch with other people. And so people got to see what I did. And then from there I went to, I came to 10 Academy and I even got a brother, like my eyes opened and my mind opened to, you know, really amazing, interesting concepts. Um, unlike your court, uh, the emphasis during my court was on business skills and data science. So we did a week of data science and the rest was really business. Um, so we learned how to, you know, uh, we learned about entrepreneurship, marketing. Um, we, we, we learned how to identify wicked problems. We did design thinking and we even did robotics amongst many other things. So it was really exciting. After that, I went back to work um, as a special representative of the Secretary General of one of the AU parastatals, um, what is known as the All Africa Students Union. And in that role, because if, you know, as a special representative, you, you do a lot more than what you would actually think. Like you're not going to sleep. I'm not going to say that you're not going to sleep, but the truth is your, your portfolio is so wide and broad that you do partnerships, you do communications, you do like human resource and many other things. So that role gave me the opportunity to, to do quite a lot. And one of the things that I did, um, one of my achievements was I was able to secure a sponsorship of about $30,000 in, in, in kind and cash um, for, the, um, for the union. Um, you know, we got licenses for students to be able to use Microsoft products. Um, most of you know that sometimes if you have a laptop and your Microsoft Office, you use a cracked version. They tell you that your license, you know, is outdated and you need to get a license and all of that. And that can be, you know, a, a, a something that deters people from actually even building their digital skills because they don't have access to these tools. And um, so I was able to do that. I was able to get funding from USAID um, on a sexual reproductive health. I spoke about so partnerships, networking, um, being able to tell a story, you know, being able to write, um, you know, all these skills are very useful. So one of the things that prior to my prior to the time I left the university, I used to write. Um, I I used to write. I used to write in one of the national newspapers as well, and so I would write from time to time, and that's how some people got to know me. And when you're working the media, you're you're really on the spotlight most of the time. So from there, I then moved to Liberia to work in Liberia briefly. And then I got back and from my time in Liberia, I got a chance to work with the next Einstein Forum um, where I worked in uh, communications and events. So I was part of the team that organized a very big scientific gathering um, that happens every two years. And on that team, I did a lot of things. So from writing letters to, to planning events and all of those details. Um, and then transition from there to communications and policy. And I did that for quite a while. Researching, organizing events, um, you know, doing social media, digital marketing and all of that. 
and then subsequently got promoted to become the manager for alumni relations um, and also working in research um, and later moved to alumni relations and community of scientists reporting. So that's it about my career really. Um, apart from all these places that I've spoken about, I think I've given you a summary. There were other things I did, but like those things you can find on LinkedIn. Um, I would say that, you know, one of the key things for me is, um, you know, I never restricted myself to, to, to saying that, oh, this is my area of specialty. I think one of those things that I actually suffered with for a very long time, and Arun will tell you, is like my identity. Um, identity not in terms of where I come from or where I belong, but, you know, I, I, for a very long time, I realized I was a generalist or what you would call a multi-potentialite. I could do a lot of things, um, but it wasn't easy because the world is so specialized. Like uh, close to 60% of the people in the world are very are specialized in one thing or the other. And for people like me, when you can do a lot of things, sometimes you might feel very awkward and you might feel like you don't belong. Um, so those are some of the challenges. Um, that I had to overcome. And so, you know, and for a very young person like me, it's it's also very interesting because there are a lot of dynamics um, for people who are very old and have like 20 years of experience, it's understandable for them to have the kind of diverse experience that I had. But um, for someone as young as myself, it was very hard to actually convince people that I could actually do the work. You know, so there were so many opportunities I lost because of my age and the fact that I, people that didn't believe that I had the experience to be able to do the job. Um, but, oh, I forgot to say that um, I also got a chance to, I got a scholarship to work in Kenya. Um, the MIT had some grants and they were given out uh, for specialists, <laughs> which is funny, um, but, you know, as a generalist, I became a specialist some point. Um, and so I got the chance to work in Kenya in a place called Embu. For those who are from Kenya, you might know about the Embu County. So I was working with the Embu County government, um, specifically the Department of Health and Environment on the waste management crisis in the, in the area. So I had to work with a team of experts to sort of um, design, come up with like a, a roadmap for managing waste within the Embu um, County. Um, but really like we helped them put in place the system they needed to invest. I, I, it's been a while since I was in Nairobi or in Embu, so I, I can't really tell about the progress, but we actually used co-creation design to really build a solution that could you know, transcend beyond like any one of us um, and actually create impact. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed my time in Embu. Trust me, if I, I wish I could go back to Embu, you know. Um, unfortunately, all my planned trips to Kenya haven't happened because, um, yes, I am currently based in Cape Town. I'm teaching currently in Ghana, and I'm up and about most of the time, but I'm hoping that I get to visit Kenya again. And it will be, like, be really nice to connect with you guys and also visit Embu at some point. So as a 10 Academy alumni, oh, sorry, as a 10 Academy alumnus, um, to be very honest with you, I am one of those people who goes into things with very minimum expectations. Like all the expectations that you can imagine that a human being can have in this world, I invest those expectations in myself and my ability to produce results. So I, to, to, actually even get the resources that 10 Academy gave me, I felt like these were resources I would have to pay thousands of dollars to get. Um, and so if such an investment was made into me building the skills that I need to be able to thrive in the workplace, then I also had the responsibility of making sure that I proved, you know, that investment worth it. Um, so some of the services and, you know, opportunities that 10 Academy is creating for you, it's not just because you are you are the most special in the world. Yes, indeed you are, um, and you've really come far, and you, you're special, and you're doing amazing, and you would go on to do amazing stuff. But 
one of what I actually want to say is one of the challenges that I I, I come across because I work with a lot of young people. Um, I forgot to say um, that I'm a global shape of the world economic forum, and I have had the chance to work with a lot of young people. And one of those things that I see, you know, that destroys the potential of young people being able to live their full potential is what you call, what I call the, the sense of entitlement. Um, one of the things I said to myself way before I even joined 10 Academy and even way after, and you know, it's been a mantra for me is that no one owes you anything, right? <laughs> no one owes you anything. If you're getting something today, you're not getting it because someone owes it to you, right? You're getting it because the person chooses to give it to you. So if someone, you know, makes an investment in you, helps you to upskill to a point in your life where you can actually take control and lead yourself to a place, you would have to do that. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because um, as young people, often we have this mindset that the older generation owes us a lot. And so, you know, we, we are going to demand from the older generation what they owe us um, and not do our part as young people. And when I talk about our part as young people, what am I talking about? We need to be innovative. We need to think out of the box. We need to be humble and we need to be ready to work. Um, the truth of the fact is if you see someone driving an older person in their 50s driving a Mercedes Benz, um, you know, and this person has been working in corporate for a long time. It should occur to you that this person just didn't get that Mercedes Benz the first year that they joined a corporate entity. For, for all you know, this person took 20 years to be able to afford this Mercedes Benz. Um, yes, and I mean, today there are other avenues that people could take to get whatever they want, but I also believe that hard work really pays and I've seen it in my life personally. Um, and also being patient, you know, sometimes as a young man or a young woman, there's this temptation from your friends that, you know, um, you know, the world is, the world is changing, times are changing. And so you as a person should change. You should put your values aside. You shouldn't do what's right. There are shortcuts to everything now. So you don't have to put in the effort, you know, you can go this way and you can get whatever it is that you're dreaming of in less than a year. So, <coughs> sorry, so you should go that way. Um, I always say that the, the, the road less traveled takes you to the places that you never imagined, but the road frequently traveled takes you the, to the places which wouldn't which which are limiting maybe um so sometimes when you see that things are going when you see that you, you, there's a point that you get in your life where you you you'd either have to pay a price you know and that price could be, be being patient that price could be allowing yourself to go through the meal that price could be waking up earlier than anyone else to be able to manage your time properly um, and also get some time in to do what you want to do. Sorry, excuse me. One of the examples I'll give you in my personal life is two years ago, I started an MBA and I had to combine the MBA with my full-time job. Um, an MBA is one of the most tedious things one can do um, because it is very draining and also very activity heavy. So you have all these case studies that you have to do on a constant basis and you cannot just put in any work. Like a, grad a graduate degree is, is not one that you just rush into it. You need to be prepared mentally to be able to do it. Um, so it took me some time to decide to go into this MBA program. And I had to combine that with full-time work, which meant I was traveling to Senegal, I was in Nairobi, I was in different countries at different times. 
and there was a time I was in China and I had to work across the time zones to be able to submit my assignments. What it basically meant was that I needed to be able to put in eight hours a day at work and still come back and sit behind my books, read, study, write my papers and submit them every Wednesday. My, my professors didn't care whether I was working or whether I was the president's son or whatsoever it is. There was no way I was going to get that degree on a silver platter. So I had to put in the work. So that also meant that I needed to spend a lot of time reading. And imagine coming back from work and being so tired and like you have all these things going on, you're managing people, you're managing money, you're managing activities, and you still have to put in the work and do an MBA. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, it wasn't easy. And I realized that it's a price I have to pay, you know, for where I want to go. And I had to learn that the hard way. And when I learned the hard way, I realized that I was doing myself good, much more than evil, because whether I did the MBA today or I did it later, I will still have to put in the time. And life is not going to pause and wait for me to be done with all the things before I would get to do this MBA. So I needed to find time and, and, and also do it. And especially because I'm not also from a wealthy family where, you know, everything is sorted. I can choose not to work for two years and then, you know, my bills would be paid and everything. No. I come from a very humble background and I have younger siblings um, and, and my parents are both on retirement and I need to be able to, together with my older siblings, support the family as well as also do things for ourselves. So it meant that I needed to put in a lot more effort um, and work very hard and steady as well so I could be able to afford because um, a year out of out of work meant that I needed to think about how I would be able to pay my bills. Um, so yeah, in terms of expectations after graduation from Ten Academy, the truth is that you're going to face the world square, squarely, fair and square. And for some of you, you might live with your parents, um, or you are living with your parents, or even if you're living alone. Um, you have bills and utilities and commitments that you have to see to at the end of the day. So you need to start. If you haven't built self-discipline, you need to start now, you know. Um, one of those things that I would say is that, you know, as young people, often we are very tempted to go with a trend. And when I say go with a trend, what is it? Um, I've seen a lot of people who live beyond their pay, uh, gap, uh, sorry, their pay, pay grade. So they pay you at the end of the month, you get paid, you get a bank alert, you're so excited, let's go to the pub. One night, drink this worth of drinks. And assuming you're earning $500 or $600, that's in one night. The reality hits you in the middle of the month and you realize that, oh, I actually have wasted this money. And then you begin, you get frustrated. And then it's a cycle that continues over the time. And at the end of the day, you realize that you wasted your youth, your youth age. So one of those things I really try to encourage young people today is to really remember that you came into this world alone and you live alone. So when you're thinking of doing anything, think about yourself, right? In a sense that how, sorry, think about yourself and how and what you would want to be known for at the end of the day. And also think about the goals that you have and the kind of sacrifices you need to make for those goals, for you to be able to achieve those goals. If you're from a background like myself and you know that, oh, you want to go into graduate school, or you have younger siblings that you need to support, you need to start saving towards whatever goals that it is that you have. So the building that culture and habit of discipline, um, financial discipline, you know, um, and also discipline generally, timeliness, being on time. For instance, um, if you're meeting someone and the person is like, oh, I'll be there at six o'clock, you don't wait till it's 6.30 before you leave the house and say that, well, you calculated where the person was coming from and you knew the person would be in traffic for one hour. So, you, you know, you don't do that. 
So that self-discipline is extremely important. Um, yeah, on that note. Now, in terms of the benefits, professional leadership organizations um, and the things that I've done, um, I have been part of a number of leadership programs. Um, I'm grateful to have had that opportunity. And like I did talk about, um, so I recently ended my term as, a, as an impact officer of the World Economic Forum, um, focused on the global shapers community in Accra, Ghana. And in that role, I basically worked as a liaison person between the World Economic Forum headquarters in Geneva and, and, and the, the community here in Accra. And what it did for me was to also help me, you know, build a cohort of young ch change makers who are very passionate about developing the city of Accra. And also got a chance to meet other young change makers from all over the world um, for, from about 400 cities. Um, so it was really exciting and fun. And, and the same, you know, with the next Einstein Forum being a platform where science meets policy, you get to meet people, you get to connect with people. Um, and some of the friends that I've built or some of the friendships that I've built over the course of time, I built through, you know, uh, NETH. Um, and Future Africa is a very brilliant platform that brings together scientists and people from different disciplines to collaborate and address some of the grand challenges we have in Africa. So think of yourself as a data scientist, think of an archaeologist, think of an, think of an ethnographist, uh, an ethnographer, think of, um, a, you know, an artist coming together to solve a problem, right? That's what Future Africa was actually meant for. Um, now, some of the lessons I've learned along the way that are tech folk, that every tech focused professional should know. I would say build em the skill of empathy. You need to build your empathy skills, right? And you also need to build your public speaking skills. And another thing worth building is your decision making skill. These are the three skills that you need, I think, in my opinion, as a tech person. Empathy decision making public speaking and if you get a chance or if you can't afford um you should also focus on building or acquiring the skills of design thinking these four skills are very important because if you know how to speak in public it's very easy for you to communicate the ideas and insights that you've derived from your data analysis um you would be able to communicate concepts and ideas that you have that you might find might be beneficial to society tomorrow, right? If you have empathy, what it means is when you see that something is wrong or when you see that people are being unethical and the, 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 the freedoms of other people will be oppressed through a code or through an algorithm, you will be able to call them out and tell them that this is not ethical, this is not right, we cannot do this. We need to do better. You can call these people out. And even, you know, recommend solutions that could solve the problem. The other bit about design thinking is you need to, as a tech person, you shouldn't say that, oh, mine is tech and that's it. You're part of an ecosystem. You're part of a society. There's culture. There is, um, you know, there's, there's spirituality. There's everything. And... As a human being part of the society, you, the problems that we face, you know, it's not hunger, famine, drought, you know, all these incidents or, or, or what you call them, disasters, are not experienced by just people who are non-tech related people. Everybody experiences it, right? So <coughs> building that skill is very useful in your profession because it will help you to collaborate with other people um and, and at the end of the day you know build the skills that you need um or solutions that you need to address the problems that we have on that note i'm going to stop and take some questions i know we are about 16 minutes to the end of the session but i would really love to hear from you guys and maybe i can answer your questions with some examples 
Wow, that was absolutely and utterly profound. I was busy here in the back snapping my fingers. I could relate a bit to some of your journey. And I think what what stands out most for me is the skills that you have mentioned as being part of the core skills, a lot of them are non-technical, like empathy. How would someone teach empathy, for example? How did you learn it? I'd be very curious to learn how you learn things like empathy. When it comes to public speaking, for instance, if you do not have a background where you either learned English as a first language and it's one of the major languages of the world, um, how would you navigate a world around where English is not your significant language? How do you become a good public speaker in such an instance? How do you get the confidence to speak in, in, in that way? And I don't remember the third one that you mentioned, but I'm very curious about how do you gain some of the skills that are very difficult to teach? You know, I don't know if there's a masterclass on empathy somewhere, but are there specific instances that you feel helped you gain the skills in a way that gave you an edge in in terms of your career growth and whatnot. Thanks, Cindy. This was, these two questions are really um, great questions. Um, mm -hmm. To address them, I'd say the first one, empathy, there's no course on empathy. <laughs> there's no course on Coursera, LinkedIn, wherever it is, you know, um, yeah. edX, there's no course on empathy. Um, mm -hmm. I built, I think for me, I got the chance to build my empathy skills through um, what I would call participant observation um, mm -hmm. or through cultural immersions. So when I was in school, my university had, to, had a program where you go and stay in a village for like mm -hmm. seven weeks and conduct research. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're going mm -hmm. to the village, there's no electricity, there's no you know, the bathrooms are not fancy. It's just a village, right? You sleep in a hut and all of that. By spending time there, you get to experience life in the village. And if you're a city mm -hmm. person, you know, your perspective mm -hmm. about the world changes because by the end mm -hmm. of the seven weeks, when you've learned to survive mm -hmm. without bottled water, you've learned to survive mm -hmm. without internet, TikTok, Instagram, all those things. And you've learned to mm -hmm. eat the food that they eat. You've learned to walk to the farm as far as mm -hmm. 10 kilometers away from where you are staying. You start mm -hmm. to think different and that's empathy. You you start to empathize with people and you start mm -hmm. to appreciate you know, some people in, in modern slang is what you appreciate my hustle, you know, mm -hmm. so empathy is like appreciating someone's hustle. So mm -hmm. that's one way to learn it. I mean, some of us might not get to learn it. You know, I don't know, but I know one of those things that happens in Kenya a lot is when it's December, everybody's going to the village. So mm -hmm. I don't know how it is. Um, <coughs> if people go to, <coughs> sorry, if people go All to right. the village, village, or they go to like the urban, you know, the towns mm -hmm. in the other parts of Kenya. Um, yeah. So that's how I learned, you know, to build my empathy. And I, it's something that you, you don't learn it once. You know, mm. you learn it over time, you repeat it, it's a repetitive cycle. So when mm. I lived in Ivory Coast, um, mm -hmm. I got a chance to travel around Ivory Coast mm -hmm. and I was conducting some research. So I lived in some of mm -hmm. the most remote parts of Ivory Coast that you can't, you wouldn't see on TV. And I was amazed mm -hmm. by the things I saw. Um, the same mm -hmm. applied to the time in Liberia, the same applied to the time in Eswatini. And even in Namibia and all the places that mm -hmm. I had a chance to travel to, you know, I realized that mm -hmm. the struggles in my country are not different from the struggles anywhere. Um, so there are a number of programs that mm -hmm. can give you this. I know there's a, there's a, um, I know, for instance, in the head of state's award scheme, the presidential award, mm -hmm. there's a presidential award scheme in Kenya, it's in a number of African countries, um, gives you that opportunity mm -hmm. that they have a gold, bronze and silver expedition that you can take. Um, and when you take mm -hmm. that program, you also learn some of these leadership skills. Um, you actually even mm -hmm. learn public speaking skills and how to relate with communities. So that's like one of those um, organizations. Um, 
I'm just going to see if I can um, if I can share a link um, so that those of you who are asking um, can can uh, can visit. And oh, another you know, group to sorry. Mm -hmm. No, go on. Sorry, so I am. It's it. called the President yeah. Award Kenya. For those of you who are in Kenya. But it's a global organization, so you can find the countries on the websites. I'm just going to share the website now. Um, but beyond that, there's also like the element of public speaking. So for those of you who are in clubs and societies in your universities um, or who were, you'd realize that there are a number of clubs that you could join to build your public speaking confidence, or you could take on leadership roles and all of that. Now. In terms of the soft skills like empathy, public speaking, design, these things, you you don't learn them at a go. You know, it's not like maybe calculus that you go to school to study. Um, mm. With these skills, you have to practice. So it's a practice as you go kind of a thing. So the more you practice, the better you become with all these, you know, with these kind of skills. So that is like one mm. one way. Um, there's a club called. Toastmasters. Um, I know mm -hmm. they are in a couple of African countries. So Toastmasters, they can help you um, build your, you know, public speaking skills. Um, and I know mm -hmm. there's a Toastmasters in Kenya as well. Um, there are about a number of them. There are about three or four Toastmasters clubs. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to share their link again with you. So, um, oh, Christian, you know Toastmasters. Yeah. So um, there's also Toastmasters in Rwanda. When I lived in Rwanda, I, I was part of Toast, Toastmasters in Rwanda. I know there's Toastmasters mm. in Ethiopia as well. So these are some of the organizations that um, you know you can actually you know join, and you don't have to pay a dime. Like you just mm. have to go and commit. You know, register, sign up, and commit to it. You know, mm -hmm. you it's it's like I always say that think of as a young person you have the opportunity to design your life and your mm -hmm. own experiences so take your life into your hands and design the kind of experiences you want today there are so many opportunities around us so you need to pick and choose you know mm -hmm. imagine that you you had a you had a board you know mm -hmm. that allowed you to pick and choose you know when you're shopping for goods those of you who might be shopping online when you're mm -hmm. shopping, you look here, you look at this store, you look at that store and all of that, and mm -hmm. you pick and choose what you want. So that's how the world has become, thanks to technology and information. So you can learn as many things as possible to build the kind of life that you want for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is very incredibly profound. So uh, the two questions that I would like for you to perhaps respond and guys we are almost out of time so if you have any questions please just type them in the chat box so you can unmute yourself and ask so Jakinda is asking would you suggest for us to do more community services and visit most of the areas that are out of our comfort zone in order to grow empathy yes 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 yes, yes. I can't say yes enough <laughs> you know go out of your comfort zone right mm -hmm. if you can afford go to embu like look for a community-based organization in embu and go and support them if you can afford if you're in ethiopia think of you know i used to be part of the social enterprise africa mm -hmm. which is um which has its roots in the uh, ethiopia the british council in Ethiopia, and they have a number of interesting programs um, that they, they run, um, and people are doing like really interesting stuff. So you can reach out to, you know, there are different programs in our communities, I'm sure you know them. Um, mm -hmm. And please get out of your comfort zone, don't stay in bed and watch Netflix um, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Great. Michael also asked a question. Yeah. yeah. He's asking, how do you deal with being a generalist or multipotential, especially when you specialize in a specific field? How did you develop an interest to specialize or to generalize and, and all that? I think for me, like generalization is not something that you actually develop. You know yourself, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. You know the food, the, the kind of foods you don't like. You know mm -hmm. the kind of colors you don't like. You know mm -hmm. the kind of um, environment you don't like. If you know, mm -hmm. if you're able to determine all these things and mm -hmm. you, you keep getting attracted to one particular thing, then you should know that that's, that's it for you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're like me, who struggled, you are good at, you know, radio and TV, you are good at mm -hmm. um, PR mm -hmm. and communications, you are good at strategy, partnerships, you are good at, you know, operations. It's very hard for you to specialize in any of these areas. So mm -hmm. if you take, for instance, even in my MBA, I didn't specialize, right? Mm -hmm. I did a general management MBA. Mm -hmm. and in my MPhil, I then decided to specialize because I realized that there's an there's a field that I'm interested in, and that field is actually even broader than I can imagine. I'm interested in innovation, but I'm mm -hmm. instead of just looking at innovation, I'm also interested in inclusive innovation. And mm -hmm. under inclusive innovation, there's inclusive finance, there's inclusive health, there's inclusive mm -hmm. education, there's inclusive a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And so over the course of time, I, through my exploration in different parts, like in different fields and working on different projects, I began to realize that I was more passionate about education. Mm -hmm. And so then I started to gravitate towards education. Mm -hmm. But my background is not in education. I have colleagues who did BA, at Bachelor of Education, and a master's in education, but I don't have a background in education, but I've gravitated towards education. Mm -hmm. And I've only gravitated towards education because I worked on different projects at different times, some in education, I've had the opportunity to teach. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that this is particularly my interest area mm -hmm. and I'm still discovering. So I'm not at the apex, I'm not at the, the height where I want to be yet. I'm still like mm -hmm. discovering just like you. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can learn from each other in this process. Wow, that is wonderful. Uh, Baraket is asking, how do you manage your time, like having a full-time work in MBA and other motives and the determination and techniques and ways you're able to deliver a quality work and on time? I like the, this question because 10 Academy can be very engaging and very overwhelming and some people are doing 10 academy while also working part-time and doing family stuff so what are some of the you know tools and hacks that you'd recommend one one thing i say i don't know if it's a good advice or not <laughs> is you know mm. what won't kill you will make you stronger mm. right so yeah. if you are able to manage your time mm. right mm. you'd come to realize that it's, 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 I think the first thing is to know yourself, know thyself, mm. know when you do your best work and know when you do your least work. If mm. it comes to family, right, you don't need to have your brain 100% alert to relate with family. Okay. Mm. It's family is a, is a part of our being. Mm. So you don't need specialist potential to relate to family. So family is something you can manage. So for instance, I get a phone call from my family, my, my dad or my mom or sisters, or even, you know, cousins or whatever, I would pick them up and speak mm. to them. If I need to show up somewhere, I would show up. If I have limited time, I would let them know I have limited time and I'll show up. But mm. then when it comes to getting the job done, you cannot compromise mm. because the truth is, it is the job that puts food on your table. It is the job that would allow you to get money to pay for your MBA. So if you don't do quality work, mm. you can't pay for your MBA. You can't have the life that you want. So mm. at the end of the day, you need to come up with a plan. And it all boils down to time management. Absolutely. How you manage your time is mm. really important. And you know, one thing I need to let you know is don't do things because you feel like doing them. Do them mm. because you have to. If you're going to follow your feelings to do anything in this world, you will do nothing. Because there will be days where you just don't want to do anything. I've had those days <laughs> where I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to chill, you know, mm. watch Netflix, eat, and just sleep, mm. lie on the couch. But mm. I had work to do, and I had to wake up, get out, do what I have to do to make the money so that I can afford to pay for the things that I want, you know? Mm. Wow. 
Absolutely. And I can more than relate to having days where you wake up and you're already tired and you don't feel like even doing getting out of bed or doing anything or going on rocket charts. I'm sure a lot of students can relate to, no, trainees can relate to where they're like, not stand up, you know. Not out to those who keep showing up. So Fumbane, and I think this will be our last question because we're running out of time, is uh, what can you say was the most valuable lesson you learned during your ten training? Jakinda, please not now. <laughs> Okay, yes, you have to tell a joke before you oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the most valuable lesson that I picked up from <laughs> mm -hmm. sorry, so yeah, sorry to cut you, but the most um, valuable lesson I picked up from my ten academy training was the importance of collaboration. We mm -hmm. spent a lot of time working in groups and. It helped me because when I learned how to work with others, it made my transition into work very easy. You are not going to, mm. when you get into employment, you're not going to work on your own. You'll be working with people from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't know how to navigate mm. that, you, it becomes a problem. At Ten Academy, my group, we had four mm. countries, Ghana, Namibia, Eswatini, and DRC. And four countries mm. we have all raised differently mm. we went to different schools we have different cultures and all of that and we were able to build a strong team mm. that we were one of the best teams during our time at 10 mm. academy and you know we we had to pitch a company mm. you know during the entrepreneurship phase and we won you know um and it was a great feeling that we were able to put our differences in our countries it became a family like we didn't even remember that we were from different countries anymore and that has helped me in my career mm. so i think one of those mm. lessons is collaboration and learning how to work with people from different backgrounds cindy it's your turn to tell the joke ah uh, <laughs> oh my goodness i wish i had jokes on on command but I <laughs> I think I'm going to have to sleep and dream up a joke in the middle of the night. Um, I may email you the wow. joke in the morning and hope it brings a smile on you. I'm sorry, okay. I'm not a funny human being. <laughs> Guys, you'll forgive me. For this one. And uh, <laughs> Samson, I am so thankful for especially that speci uh, that last piece of advice. Why? We are having group feedback sessions and uh there was a lot of there was some drama when it came to group work you know naturally some people are ahead or more conversant with concepts than other people and trying to invite and uh, you know we're trying to invite them to see that as an opportunity to lead to show up instead of feeling inconvenienced and uh and all that or looking down on their fellow colleagues and everything and they keep telling them that in the world of work you will work with people you think are idiots or don't know what they're doing or you will wonder how in the world they got that job in the first place but it's your responsibility to find ways to collaborate to step up you don't have to have a title to be a leader and you closing us out with that is an absolutely a dream of a closer so samson it's my heartfelt gratitude to you for just showing up and and spewing words of wisdom i i have learned a lot from this session and you taking your time to join us right now thank you very, very much for being... so guys <laughs> thank you for being receptive i mean it's been a challenge finding the right time um i'm teaching and working at the same time and it's been very hectic so thanks for being amenable to my my schedule mm -hmm. and i really appreciate yeah. it. i really would love to see everybody because it's you know i feel like i've been looking <laughs> at the at, at, names, at the camera you know? um, <laughs> yeah it, it, it is and, 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 it, and is it feels a... like I, I don't know yeah i know it's just you and my voice in here uh, we, i hope so. we're not on a space <laughs> mission <laughs> For yeah. some people, I think the problem in bed and retired for the day because of the time zones and everything. So, you know, it can it can get a bit time awkward, zone, you know. Right. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah. guys, can we just do say send a group picture when you guys channel, get to have your next very- Um, I'd love to see you all together. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I will send a group picture. Guys, who is in a position to turn on your camera so we can take a group picture? Anyone who wants to turn on the camera? Ah, Binyam, great to see you. Anyone else? Ah, Efani. You guys are dressed so officially and so nicely. Michael, take oh, wow. care. I, I, I can't, I can't seem to see anyone. You can't, you can't seem to see anyone? Oh, okay. You guys are dressed very smartly and they're in an office and you're not trying to turn your cameras on. I know I'm speaking. I literally, I'm in a glass house right now. So I'm trying to make sure I can also take a photo. <laughs> guys, if you're in a position to turn on your camera, let's take a group photo so that Samson can remember us next time so that even if he meets you somewhere in an airport or on the drive somewhere we are not total and complete strangers so i'm going to take a screenshot of this if you are able to smile let me just turn my camera on as well uh people will never put on their photos when we are housing stuff oh i can you can now see people i don't know why my camera is not turning on yeah i was i was actually there's like I can now see people. Ah, great. Hi, guys. Ah, Good to see your faces. Great. People don't turn. I'm seeing some of the faces for the first time, man. So this is a good thing. <laughs> and they'll be neighbors <laughs> if some of these people, and I wouldn't know. We will be passing each other on the lift, and we wouldn't know, you know. <laughs> so I'm right. taking one screenshot. Yeah. So uh, guys, smile one last time, then I'll take another screenshot. Yay! You guys are awesome. We've already taken too much of your time, Samson. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much.